Hi, thanks a lot and welcome to this Nextflow Tower demonstration. I'm going to give a little bit of background on Nextflow and then really jump into the latest features that we're releasing with Nextflow Tower. So to start with, Nextflow is both a syntax for writing workflow pipelines, as well as a runtime for executing them on different platforms. The basics of the Nextflow syntax is that you write pipelines in different code. This can be Python scripts, this can be R, Bash, whatever you prefer. You then link these bits of code together with Dataflow programming. It's a highly scalable model for writing these pipelines and then define the dependencies with containers. All Nextflow pipelines are defined as, as Git repositories, which can then be executed on any of the supported platforms. This includes all the major cloud providers, as well as the traditional on-premise schedulers. So while Nextflow provides developers, scientists, engineers, with ways of writing these highly parallel scalable applications that can run on many of the different execution engines. It also provides a way to access and run pipelines in a scalable containerized way. There's still some limitations associated with it. We wanted to build out the features that they requested from users in doing so. Nextflow Tower is a full stack web application really designed for the, for the centralized command posts for your Nextflow pipelines. It now allows users to monitor their pipelines from anywhere, to launch these workflow executions from within the application itself, to have team workflow management, as well as to deploy the resources associated with running these pipelines in the cloud and in on-premise schedulers. I'm now gonna go through and show you a quick demo of the latest features of Tower, so you can get up to date with what's happening with the development of the, of the application. So this is the Nextflow Tower application. And for a biologist or a user, someone who wants to launch these pipelines, they can access the pipelines via the user, user interface. Here, for example, they can select the pipeline that they wish to launch. When they select this pipeline, they can select particular inputs they wish, upload parameters files, for example, specify the specifics around the launch um, templates here. For example, if they want you to save some merged fastq files, upload them with UMIs here. And once they specify these options, they simply launch the pipeline. Once the pipeline is launched, they're able to monitor all of the execution of the pipeline. So in this case here, I could go through and see previous executions of the pipeline. We have understanding of the, the pipeline which is launched, the command line which is used, parameters associated with that launch, the configuration, as well as the execution log, which we can follow along live. We're also able to download these logs or even share this execution with someone um, who's a colleague. We have some general information about the pipelines which are launched. For example, uh, the time that they're launched, the, the buckets which we've been using for working directories, the computer environments here, as well as the status of each of the tasks which are running live. The processes themselves are shown here, and you can see this is a pretty complex pipeline and we have something on the order of 50 or 60 different steps here, some aggregate statistics around the wall time, CPU, memory, et cetera, as well as the costs. And on the back end here, we have a full database of the history of the, the execution, both for all of the cloud providers there, um, as well as the, the costs for each of the different regions that these instances are running, and if they're running in spot or, or on reserved instances. We also have information around the load, the, the, the frequency, as well as each individual task. And this is particularly important when you want to understand that these tasks are running potentially tens of thousands in very disparate work directories. We wanna be able to access that information and we wanna be able to search for it and find particular information, particularly in these errors. So for example, if I wish to search for um, a particular problem here, I could see the information that this was the command that was run. So this was salmon that was launched. I could see the status of that task the work directory, as well as any of the environment variables. I can find information about the execution time, when it was submitted, the duration of that task, the resources that were requested, as well as the resources that were ultimately used there. I also have information on the execution log, and this is particularly important you think that if there's an error, I'm able to now go into the individual task logs, find out that information, and really understand where that error came from, and really follow along live with all of my tasks which are launched. This provides me with like a centralized location for that information. Finally, from a monitoring perspective, I can understand the resource usage 
of that pipeline. So this pipeline execution was launched. I can understand the amount of CPU which was used, or for example, the allocation of the memory which I've been providing. Potentially, I could be requesting more memory that was required, more time, more CPU, et cetera. And all of this information is available to me from the Nextflow Tower interface. Now, if I was, for example, uh, not so much interested in just launching pipelines, but I was interested in developing pipelines myself as a workflow developer, I have the possibility in Nextflow Tower to publish these pipelines, not just for myself, but also for everyone in my group, part of my project, my organization, and potentially even the world. Nextflow Tower provides people with the ability to create pipelines, which can then be shared with all of their colleagues. By creating a new pipeline here, I can enter in a pipeline name. I'm gonna take one of the NF Core pipelines. So I'm gonna say NF Core eager here, and all Nextflow pipelines are Git repositories. So I can simply take the repository ID, enter that in here. I can choose a compute environment. I'll show you in a moment how this links in, but essentially selecting the compute environment is defining um, exactly how that's going to run. I can also define a revision in this case. This is all of the versions on GitHub and it's using the API to look this up. So all of the versions that are available for that Git repo for that Nextflow pipeline, as well as choosing a config profile. This is all of the config profiles available inside that Nextflow config. Essentially, this is designed for workflow developers, for maintainers, um, for users of Nextflow to be able to customize and create their pipelines uh, as they require for users to use. In my case, I'm just going to apply a test profile here because I know that that's something which is required for this pipeline to run. I'm going to create that pipeline. And once I've created this pipeline, it's now available for everyone in my workspace to access and to launch. Users can simply log into the system, select the application, select the pipeline they wish to launch. And once they select the pipeline they wish to launch, all of this information from this parameters become available to them. They can upload their own data. They can select exactly drop downs, which, they, which are sort of required for their data, have Boolean values, um, as well as any particular information which is required for them. Importantly, the user now no longer needs to know anything specific about either Nextflow, the pipeline itself, or even specific about the compute environment where it's going to launch. It kind of abstracts all of that information away and allows workflow developers and organizations to create complete UI interfaces for the pipelines which they develop. So how does this launch? So how is kind of what's happening in the back end here? Nextflow Tower, we have a concept of compute environments. And these computer environments are essentially where the computer is taking place. They allow us, for example, to connect into any of the supported environments that we have within Nextflow. I'll show you an example here. We have a Slurm interface here. Slurm is a way for interacting with a traditional on-premise scheduler. In this case, it's actually running in the cloud though. I would specify my Slurm as my, as my workflow manager. I would specify here SSH credentials a work directory, but most importantly, I would select a host name, a head queue, which is where the next floor job would run, as well as a compute queue, which is where the tasks will run. Once I've selected this and imported this once, this would be available for everyone in that workspace, in that work environment to be able to launch their pipelines and I would be able to, to specify that. For people working in the cloud, it can become possible to select any of the different platforms that you want. So for example, with AWS Batch, we have the ability here to build all of the resources on the fly for users. So typically Nextflow uses something like 15 different services to run in the cloud. I can select Amazon Batch here, put my credentials in, select a region. Again, this is using all of the APIs so that you don't um, need to recall all of this information yourself. Select the work directory that I wish to use can choose which mode. Uh, I'm going to use Forge, which is essentially creating all of those resources for us. I want to use spot instances, 256 CPUs in my queue is a maximum. I can use EBS auto scaling. This is going to build and essentially expand the, the size of the disk for each of the virtual machines that these tasks are going to run on. And finally, just create. So with a few options there now, and with a few source choices there, I can go and create all of these resources. I should give this a name here.
select that, and now that's available for everyone in my work environment. So while computer environments allow organizations to organize all of the resources associated with the computation, we also allow in Nextflow Tower the ability to organize the other resources associated with workflow usage. For example, we can organize organizations to have workspaces, which allow us to collect the entities I've just shown you before, as well as members. And members are simply part of organizations which can have role-based access to that. We can organize those members within teams, and those teams can be specified from the user interface here, as well as these workspaces themselves, which allow us to collect project-like access to all of the entities here. So you can see within this RNA seq workspace that I have, particular pipelines, executions, and runs, which can, can be monitored, executed on, and modified by all of the people inside that workspace. Importantly, everything I've shown you in the Nextflow GUI can be controlled from the API. This means that Nextflow Tower can be built into a larger system or enables people to automate the processes associated with their workflow jobs. If you'd like to hear more information or speak to one of our experts about the deployment of Nextflow Tower in your environment, you can contact us at secure.io slash demo. We'd love to hear more about your use cases. Thanks a lot.